Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nix user showing you Ubuntu Mate 15.10. Now, this is the last year's second release uh, of uh, Ubuntu, so everything is based on that particular version. And um, what it has on it is the, as far as the desktop is concerned, is the fork of the old GNOME, I believe it would have been uh, 2.32, which is based on GTK2, the graphical toolkit uh, for GNOME. Uh, notice I don't say GNOME. I think it's correct to pronounce it GNOME but I'm not entirely sure that someone might want to correct me in the comments. So this is what you're presented with when you first uh, install uh, Ubuntu Mate. Um, I installed Ubuntu Mate with uh, using a USB by uh, a USB image by writing it to the USB flash drive with DD. Uh, pretty much in a similar way that I showed you uh, in the tutorial on writing and verifying a an ISO or an image anyway to a flash drive. As you can see here on the left hand side we have uh, some documentation style things style of things. We have support and we have things related to the project. They've got some interesting things here so I think what we'll do, one of the things that is kind of piquing my interest is this shop. So I might just click on that and it seems to me that you can just buy some merchandise to support the project. That's pretty cool. And I imagine features will just be a little bit of an advertisement Oh, and it seems to be just as I thought it would be. They're advertising Steam here, and that's probably something that the free software, I shouldn't say probably, I don't speak for them, but I know almost for certain that they would not promote the idea of Steam being promoted on a GNU plus Linux system. But it doesn't bother me any. I just thought I'd mention that based on free software philosophy and principles they probably wouldn't support it and you see down here you have got a little bit of a way I think of blogging that you've installed it so you can I'm just going to minimize that likewise as per previous distro reviews you can just click this button and then close it if you don't want to see it again so first of all we've got this lovely wallpaper which I imagine by right clicking and just remember when I do these reviews I might have used them for a little bit, the the you know the distro for a little bit, but it doesn't mean that I've looked into every single nook and cranny. Uh, I tend to be a lot on the command line or in a web browser, and not much in between. So perhaps email and things like that, but not much in between. So it looks like to me that unlike KDE's folders snafu that I had last time, uh, it's pretty obvious how to. Um, supply or even install a new wallpaper looks like to me you can just go add but since this is not a review about Mate but rather a review about Ubuntu Mate I'll try and refrain from going into every single nook and cranny and try and keep this under half an hour unlike my previous videos so you can see here that they're promoting at least Firefox web, Firefox web browser you can go straight into that. You can also see your desktop icons. Noting too that I have the previous Solus Live disk that I put it in there. Noting as well, unlike um, Linux Mint's XFCE edition uh, and the KDE edition, that we have the four desktops that we can go from here. You would have just seen the FFmpeg, or rather I should say libav recording this desktop session now. We have these three menus here 
applications is literally like you expect. Places is just a simple way of uh, looking up files using the file explorer uh, or the file manager just by for example clicking desktop. There's nothing in there but I can go one up and have a look at that. One of the features I like in a GUI uh, file manager is the ability to split panes as I showed you in the KDE version of Linux Mint. Now I'm going to press F3 as I just did then and we see that the split, split panes. I believe under GNOME 3 this isn't possible. That is under the Nautilus for uh, GNOME this isn't possible and that you actually have to do something like this to emulate the behavior. So I'll do that. I'll see if this works. And I just press Control N and then that. You notice too that it's able to uh, tile in two directions. It isn't however able so far that I've seen to tile into quadrants. I find that a little bit of a drawback as I'm used to tiling window managers and being able to tile to my heart's content cuts until my heart is content. So, but yes, that's how you get to some different locations. We have system and we'll go through some of these things in here. So going into here we have some accessories. We can do a backup. I think this is much like we've seen in other distributions where you can just do a bit of a backup of say your uh, home directory. But again this is something which you could leave to a cron job. You could also um, leave to um, you know a tar, a tar activity of some sort or a script or something that you could leave in the background. You can see there it's defaulting to home, folders to ignore, but we can do, we could do all of this, um, yeah, really could do all of this in the command line. Storage, what we can't do though is, I think we can't just directly go to Amazon S3, so it seems that there is some uh, integration with uh, cloud services here um, that I'm not so familiar with. But that's quite interesting. Okay, we have a, a, char a character map. I'm not going to go through that. We seem to have a grandpa archive manager. I'm totally not sure what that is about. But um, it seems to be uh, something that would have been previously written by the Free Software Foundation and it's probably the old file roller. But um, yeah, you can again archive things using tar if you're that keen. And uh, I recommend using the um, dot tar lzma the key thing actually with lzma um, is that uh, it doesn't have the file permission so you need to tarball then use lzma uh, you can do that also by using the xz uh, extension uh, we've got the calculator and uh, let's have a look at that and you can see who it was actually written by remember the other day I was commenting on the the other calculator and it didn't seem to be obvious who wrote the calculator but in this case it is that's great so uh, the multi search tool again is this equivalent of find so if I just uh, uh, screen uh, just do that you can see the screencast that I'm currently recording it's already 343 megs moving along password and keys I'd say that's a wallet Looks like it is a wallet, and you can you you can store PGP keys. So and open SSH keys. Um, plank. I have no idea what plank. Ah, uh, that's the old plank that I. Okay, I didn't think it was going to be that. So now it looks like it's something we're going to have to uh, put up with a bit. I think we might just kill that for now. So. and we'll just kill all blank that's nice um, Pluma text editor I presume that's the old gedit and it just updated for GDK well updated not for updated to GDK2 but just updated to you know to be a little bit more modernized but uh, 
just with that um, GTK2 toolkit we can just take a screenshot and that's kind of nice it gave me a little bit of a, uh, a camera sound effect I don't have the loop um, sound uh, going back in so I can't show you that Eye of Mate image viewer yeah that was uh, probably the old EOG or Eye of Gnome you can see there they are strongly sticking to the GTK2 apps, I can see. Mate color selection, I'm not totally... Uh, oh, that's just if you want to choose some colors for maybe by their HTML numbers, you can do so. Shot well. Let's take a look at that. Looks like it's a photo editor. I don't tend to use photo editors, but here you go. Looks like I don't have any photos here to manage, but that's fine and simple scan which is one of those applications that you would use to replace Xsane with this is 3.18 um, which says it is actually from uh, the newer GNOME we again have the same selection uh, or a very similar selection of applications for um, communications over the internet this is your web browser I won't bring that up we have this this is a replacement for Xchat um, XChat having some um, mm, some practical issues with being available on Windows if you are not willing to compile it yourself you need to go and look for a pre-compiled version the author does not provide it that I'm saying for XChat for HexChat I believe the source is immediately available we have the Pigeon Internet Manager um, we have we have we have the Thunderbird Mail um, we have transmission and I think that most of you guys would know what that is all about we again have LibreOffice Mate Dictionary let's see how different that is to Nord. the other day I looked up chess on the other one just for fun let's see and again we don't really have the version that I'm looking for which is a chess game um, we go into sound and video we have the Brazero CD recorder I wonder if that is yeah see that's again coming from GNOME 3 3.xx uh, GUCV view I don't have a, um, ca a a video camera like a what do they call them uh, a webcam I don't have a webcam on this machine I've installed MPV Media Player, so that's not something that's in there by default, but I do recommend you try it as a replacement for VLC. It doesn't have DLNA capabilities, but it's still pretty competent. We have Rhythmbox, and uh, Rhythmbox is playing all your music. So that is a version for uh, a little bit more modern version. Uh, than the older ones, uh, the two point series. Uh, we have sound controls here, and you can just manage this is basic. Oh, wow! Uh, don't know if you can hear me there. Yeah, I, um, that was quite interesting actually. Um, what happened there is it seems that when I went into the, the settings for that, it turned down it turned down my uh, volume controls. So I, I'm not going to edit that out. I want you to actually see what happened there. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, we have obviously the classic VLC, which is not built on GTK. It's built on Qt. And this is the current version. Oh, that's something I didn't know. You can just click on that and it'll show you some information about the dev team. So, there's your VLC, something that I recommend. Actually, just while we we're talking about VLC, I did mention before that VLC has DLNA capability. Um, I believe you need to go and view the, is it the playlist. And I do have there you go, you can see my mini DLNA sitting on the network. So you can actually play videos 
on the network but we're not going to bother with that and here we go we get the same old problem see this I used to find the, v uh, the DLNA plugin used to do this all the time I'm going to force it to quit that's kind of a little horrible so I don't recommend you do that if it's going to yeah so in that case you're probably just better off using MPV overall uh, the system tools Kaja which will just be the file manager that we saw before actually no this is a different file I wonder if that is nah that'd be the same as what we saw before I'm pretty sure it is if I go like that yeah it's the same so nothing new there okay um, Dconf editor again that's if you're gonna it's like a registry editor for um, for GNOME or MATE as I should call it now because things have changed GW package install look that's just if you go find a, a random dev file that you want to uh, install on the uh, from the internet um, you can do that I recommend installing from source to be honest if you are looking for a .dev file then perhaps it's better to install by source in slash user slash local that'll be in an upcoming video talking about that type of thing uh, how to manage foreign installs from source code as opposed to using binary uh, log file viewer that's kind of cool um, and it's allowing me to do that which I can really um, just get from uh, I'll type this um, slash file slash log slash xorg and we can get the same information scroll through it because we're using less okay so we'll just close that little terminal there and I think we've seen enough of that little app I shouldn't call it an app it's really an application isn't it it's a full application not a little mini app uh, we've got the disk usage analyzer um, a scan file system, what's that all about? I wonder, oh... Hmm. Just saying how much is used in what. That's kind of cool, I like that, and it gives you a nice little visualisation over there. It's pretty nifty. What's this? Scanner folder. I'm not going to do that, but I liked that. It's a nice little system admin tool. We have the system monitor. I expect all of you guys should be familiar with that. Again, I recommend using top. If you didn't see my previous video, I would have shown you how to use top. And you can see that. I actually recommend HTOP. I might just install that just for kicks now. Just to show you that. So okay. Notice I'm using apt there because it gives you a nice little progress bar on the left. And if I press HTOP look at that, isn't that a much nicer, although it does use in cursors unlike uh, top anyway, that's enough of that so yeah, you've got that system monitor there, you can kind of have a look through and see what you've got there, much of that information will be in well, all of it will be available through the file system if you know what you're looking for power statistics, or oh, you were just in the Mate terminal, I'm not going to go there um, power statistics, so it doesn't, yeah, we're not going to find much here I think, except for just IRQs and stuff like that. We are finding much, but not much that I want to use. Okay, so I mentioned places before. You can mount a, a volume if you want to, if you've got the permissions to do it or whatever. You can just mount mount volumes just like that in the file manager. Kaja. Um, you can mount network stuff, I believe. Although I'm, I do things a little bit differently. I use NFS and I don't use SMB, so that's not going to be a, a great use to me um, as again we've got that Mate search tool, I do think we found that before ESC so I don't like that things are in two places at once, that doesn't serve me very well, one place thank you very much uh, system administration um, yep so if you want to just edit LightDM uh, just remembering that Linux Mint uses MDM so that's a little bit different but you can change the background I imagine uh, we'll just put in the password for this uh, box here and uh, yeah you can just do change a few things it looks like you can change the theme paneling and that sort of thing which is kind of neat I like being able to do those things uh, mo modify the network a little bit uh, it doesn't seem to be for things like wireless and all that I imagine that's through this that you would do all that sort of stuff 
Um, let's have a look. Oh, you can configure a VPN. I imagine that you can configure. Oh, just you can establish. You can establish a connection, which is fine. Um, I've got DHCP on the network along with static IP, so not too hard. Again, um, we go into printers and things like that. I just, I really do recommend you just go into um, your cup settings. If you're going to manage printers, so if you just go localhost 631 like that, I've got um, I've got a printer elsewhere on the network that will do all that sort of stuff. But um, the same sort of principle, just put in the URL for the printer and then that the port 631. I really do think that that's the best way to do it with the software updater. I haven't actually updated the software on this this thing, and it's probably because I'm I've, I'm going to wipe it after I've done this video. But uh, that seems good. Okay. Um, software and updates again. You know, you can just change. I think you might be able to change your repositories and stuff like that, which I do recommend just using your local ISP repository if they're reasonably up to date and high speed. But yeah. Um, start up this creator. Ah. Ah. That's kind of cool. Looks like you might be able to create a live USB or something like that. I really like that idea. We've got that on um, Fedora, I think. Uh, time and date. Yeah, you can just change. That's, look, that's stuff you can do through the command line as well. So again, this is sort of system admin stuff that I think I'm going to have an opportunity to take you through. Yeah, it's the sort of thing you learn when you're using LFS or Gen2. Um, yeah, so users and groups, welcome. And I guess the rest of it is, you know, you've got your additional drivers, Bluetooth adapters, Bluetooth manager. Displays is kind of interesting. You can kind of change your resolution, change your monitor layout and stuff like that if you want to. Um, uh, well, firewall configuration, you can do that through IP tables. Uh, the look and feel, you can change the appearance of themes, background. We, we went through that before. anti alias fonts and stuff like that. It's kind of really cool. Um, and finally, what do we have here? Okay, Mate Tweak, which I guess is like a little tweak tool so you can show things on there. You can change that. So you can change where the where those buttons are. That's kind of cool. And what else do we have? Qt 4 settings. Of course, we've got VLC installed, so it's only natural we've got Qt installed. Which therefore Qt 4 will be, uh, you know, the settings there. We've got the screensaver. Um, you know, if you're doing these sorts of videos, probably a good idea to turn the screensaver off. I didn't this time, but uh, compositing window manager, which is kind of nice. Um, for the smooth, smooth, the smooth appearance and the um, the shadowing behind the windows that you get. That's what that compositing means. Ah, uh, we've got some. Uh, oh, again, this is some replication, uh, duplication coming here with the backups. But we do have file management preferences. I'm just wondering if that is the same as if I went into here and go preferences like that and it is. So again duplication, prefer things to be in one place only. Um, language support, I'll let you guys go into that, choose your languages. Onboard settings, what's that about? Hmm, Dr. Screen Edge. So it looks like there might be some window border management stuff going on there. Maybe use some some specific behaviors for managing windows. Again, I use tiling window managers, so not my forte. Preferred application, so what do you want to open a PDF up with? What do you want to open an ODF up with? And startup applications, what do you want to start automatically? So yeah. So I guess um, the purpose of um, Ubuntu Mate um, is to, you know, take up where I guess the old Ubuntu 
uh, took up from, you know, the one with 2.32 GNOME. Does it do a pretty jo good job? I think so. There's a bit of duplication around the place and things like that, and that's personal preference. I don't like things being duplicated, but um, is it an attractive distro? Yeah, I think, you know, what makes it attractive really is the nice theming and um, the wallpaper. It's pretty attractive. Does it harken back to the old uh, Bunto? I think so, with some of those little little theming elements there. And, but there are a few differences as well with the green theming. Um, did I find it easy to use? Yeah, there was no problem, uh, you know, using this. So I'd, I'd give this a sort of 8.5 out of 9 for uh, for a user, and it'd be particularly good if you want to use it on a uh, low resource environment. Uh, in fact, let's uh, go back to uh, HTOP. I wonder if we've got HTOP in here. No, it doesn't. Oh, there it is. Oh, lovely. So that's a bit of a bug there. They need to fix that. If you're going to have HTOP installed and put it in the desktop entry, you better fix that. Anyway, so yeah. I mean, I'm using a fair bit of memory here on this system, but let's uh, let's see. Overall, I've, I've got a 16 gig system, so using 1.3 gig is nothing, and I'm also recording a video. So, and I've opened the web browser before, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, the web browser's probably not running now. So, yeah. Overall, yeah, 8.5 to 9. You make your own call. Anyway, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you uh, want to see any other particular videos, tell me. There'll be the technical ones coming up as I discuss things. Uh, and I'll be sure to bring more Linux reviews to you. GNU plus Linux, of course. Anyway, good, uh, good night, guys. Have a good one.